In this video, we're going to explore how we can use tile maps in Unity to quickly and easily create a 2D level using hexagonal shaped sprites. We're also going to look at how we can navigate the player around a hexagonal environment, as well as how to manipulate some of the tiles in our level as we interact with it. Tile map allows us to quickly lay out and create 2D levels using a combination of sprites and game objects. Tile map also gives us great control over properties such as layer ordering, colliders, animated tiles, and more. To get started designing our level, we first need to open the Tile Palette window and create our palette from our hexagon tiles. Let's choose Window, 2D, Tile Palette. In our Tile Palette window, let's choose Create New Palette, and in our grid type, let's select Hexagon. Unity provides support for both point top and flat top style tiles. For this demo, our tiles are point top, so we'll select them as our hexagon type. Let's then drag our tiles into the window so that we can begin laying out our scene. Let's then create a new tile map to paint our tiles onto by choosing Create 2D Object Hexagonal Point Top Tile Map. Depending on the types of tiles we use, we may need to make some adjustments to the grid size and the sorting method. The tiles we're using for this demo have some depth details as part of the sprites, so they're not a perfect shape right away. Let's edit our grid to make them fit together more nicely. Even after adjusting our grid, you can see that when we start laying out the tiles, they don't seem to sort properly. So we also want to change to a custom sorting method to adjust for these extra details. Let's select the tile map and set the sort mode to individual. Then let's open our graphics settings by choosing Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, and let's change the transparency sort mode to custom axis and let's set our transparency axis to 0, 1, 0 to sort only by the Y position of our sprites. Now we should be good to continue laying out our level. If you are interested in learning more about how to import assets for tile mapping, advanced level building, and examples of other types of tiles that are supported by the tile map tool, we've linked some of our other videos on this topic in the description below. I've created an example scene here using our tiles and added a sprite for our player. We want to make sure that the player can only move in any of the six possible directions in a single input and calculate the direction they need to travel. With this type of hexagon, there will always be another hexagon tile to the left or right of the player. I've created a script for our player called Movement Controller. This script handles input from the player input component and is stored in a vector 2 called Movement Input. In the update method, we check if we've already moved when we receive input, and if we haven't, we call the GetMovementDirection method. This method handles the movement logic to allow us to navigate our hexagonal grid. We first check which direction in the x-axis to move, as we can always move in this direction with our current hexagon type. Then we check if the player would like to move up or down. If so, we set our direction to move the player half a unit left in the x-axis and half a unit up or down in the y-axis depending on which key is pressed. Otherwise, we set our direction a whole unit to the left or right. We then add the direction to the transform of our sprite. Now if we take a look at our game, we can move our sprite around relative to each tile in our level. I have another tile map game object here, which when enabled, covers the map with some other tiles to create a fog of war effect that you typically find in a strategy game. As our player moves around, they're able to uncover portions of the map. To achieve this, we calculate the current position of our player inside the tile map grid. With this information, we can then select the adjacent tiles surrounding the player's coordinates and remove them. Let's open up our movement controller and take a look. You can see that we have a reference to our fog of war tile map. Each time we move our sprite, we call the update fog of war method. In here, we use the world to cell method to get the current tile coordinate of our sprite relative to our tile map grid. Using this information, we then calculate the surrounding tiles by stepping through and offsetting our coordinates in both the X and Y directions. As our player will be in the center, we need to start with a negative offset on both the X and Y axis. The vision value allows us to adjust the scale of our offset and determines how many tiles we uncover. We start by iterating through the x-axis with negative the value of our vision, 
and continue until x is no longer less than or equal to the vision value. We then add another for loop inside of this loop, iterating through the y positions in the same way. With each x iteration, we iterate our y positions the same number of times. With our vision set to 1, this should give us 9 coordinates from negative 1, negative 1 to 1, 1, in both the x and y axis, which we can then use to remove our fog of war around the player. Inside our second for loop, we use the set tile method on our fog of war tile map. This method allows us to change the tile at any coordinate on a tile map. We are using our current player tile with an offset from our x and y values to get the location of the tile we want to remove. By setting the second parameter in this method to null, our tile map will remove any existing tile at the selected location on the grid. If we play our game, we can now move around our map and our fog of war is removed as we explore. If we adjust our vision value, the higher this value is, the more tiles we can uncover as we move. This is the perfect start to any great strategy game. For more information on the tile map tool or to download the demo project and try it out for yourself, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.